2 Peter where he says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. And uh, we're just looking at growing spiritually. We're going to look uh, tonight at Psalm 51. I shouldn't have confused you, but uh, Psalm 51 should be right near the middle of your Bible there. Uh, we saw that the, the master key to growing spiritually, of course, is, is the Bible. You're not going to grow spiritually. You're not going to grow uh, to be like Jesus without your Bible. And uh, the, the master purpose, of course, is to glorify God. Uh, we don't want to have a selfish reason. Uh, you, you know, we don't want it to, to be about us. We want it to be about the Lord, uh, growing, growing spiritually. And we've looked at some, some keys. And uh, one of them, of course, was obedience. And that makes sense to me. Uh, if, if the Bible is the master key, then obeying it is a key in, in growing and uh, being like Jesus. Uh, we use the illustration of unlocking different doors. Uh, obedience unlocks the servant's quarters. And uh, that's where we need to be. That's how the Lord describes us. Last week we looked at unlocking the power plant. Uh, the power that we need is found in the filling of the Spirit. And, uh, you know, it's so important for us to understand uh, the power of the Christian life is not in us. And, and the focus is not on us. It's on the Lord. And, you know, many times when we, we disappoint ourselves, but the problem is we have our hope many times in ourselves rather than in the Lord. That's why we get so disappointed in ourselves. Uh, but in, in Galatians, he talks about how, it, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Uh, the, the power is found in the Lord. Instead of living in the flesh, we need to live in the Spirit. And uh, we gave kind of a definition that... Uh, being filled with the Spirit really is living every moment as if we're just walking right with, right with Jesus beside us and what He would have us to do. Well, tonight we're looking at confession. Uh, confession cleans out every room in the, the rooms of our life, the house of our life. And we're, we're, it's illustrated in the life of David. It, it's really interesting to think about David being called a man after God's own heart. Because David did some really bad things. <laughs> and uh, in 2 Samuel 11, it, it records how that David lusted. Um, he committed adultery. He lied. And then, I guess you could even say uh, murdered. He, he tries to cover it up and, and to ignore it. You know, you know, the Bible says very clearly, uh, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. And uh, God confronted him through the, the prophet, thou art the man. And, and, and David confessed his sin. And that's what Psalm 51 uh, is about. Uh, I want us to, to read it together tonight. And here's how I want us to do this. I'd like us to stand. And I'm going to read two verses. And then I'm going to have you read one verse. And we're going to work our way all through the chapter. All right? So you'll read the third verse and the sixth verse uh, out loud. So let's stand together. And let's read that. We'll read the whole chapter. It's not very long. be a little different tonight. So I'll read two verses, and then together we'll read the, the third verse and continue on that way. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. 
and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Thank you. You may be seated. I find it interesting the different things you get out of Scripture when you read it aloud. You might try that sometime in your personal devotions. Uh, I find sometimes when I'm reading the scriptures before a sermon out loud, you notice things that you don't know when you read it silently to yourself. Um, But this is a a psalm of of confession. Uh, David realized that sin had made him dirty, and he asked to be cleansed. Uh, he, He talks about how sin had made him sick, and he asked to be healed. Now, sin had taken away his joy, and he asked that, that it be restored. He, he knew that he'd violated God's love and, and God's law, and, and he asked God for pardon and for mercy. In the New Testament, the word confession is the Greek word homo logio. Uh, it means to say the same thing. And confession is, is just saying the same thing as God. But you, you know and I know that it's more than just words. Uh, parents... You've all had times when you've told one of your children, now tell your sister you're sorry. I'm sorry. And then sometimes you might have said, and mean it. (laughs) Uh, Because words aren't enough, are they? Confession is not just saying words. Uh, I remember growing up hearing people say, uh, we'll ask so-and-so to to word the prayer. And I always thought, that's a weird way to say it. You know, it's not just words. We're, We're talking to the Lord. And True confession means taking the same heart attitude toward our sin that God does. It's it's not just agreeing with God verbally. It's in our heart, hating the sin and turning from it. And in Psalm 51, you see a lot of things, but it'll help us understanding this area when we see, first of all, a right view of sin. And then we see a right view of God. And we see a right view of self. And just each verse helps us with this. In verse 1, in understanding a right view of sin, we see that sin deserves judgment. Have mercy upon me, O God. If you understand mercy, for mercy to be real, it only comes when we're declared guilty. It's not mercy if someone withholds punishment you don't deserve. (laughs) That's not mercy, that's justice. Mercy is when you deserve punishment and and it's withheld. Listen, we've all sinned. The Bible makes that very clear. We all deserve judgment. And fortunately, the Bible tells us as well, God is rich in mercy. It's new every morning, he tells us in Lamentations. He never runs out. In Psalm 103 and verse 8, he says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Aren't you glad? Sin deserves Judgment. Secondly, sin demands cleansing. Verse 2, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. You know, I think sometimes we feel like if we just let enough time go by, everything will be okay. I've seen people do that in personal relationships. They never get it right, but time kind of, you know, it fades a bit. Well, listen, sin demands cleansing. It's not enough just to move away or in time or space. Uh, And only God can cleanse us from our sin. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we've done. There's a tendency as humans to think, well, I've done wrong, so I'll do a whole bunch of right to make up for it. Well, that's not the way it works. Sin demands cleansing. It deserves judgment. It demands cleansing. There's a wonderful verse in in 1 John. You need to at least know where it is. 1 John 1 and and verse 7. And the the last part of of the verse says this, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. You probably know the ninth verse. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Verse 7 is talking about the present continuous action of the blood of Christ. It cleanses us from sin. And our sin demands cleansing. There's no other solution for it. Sin deserves judgment. It demands cleansing. And thirdly, verse 3, we need to accept full responsibility. I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. You know, the tendency with sin is to excuse it, uh, to ignore it, uh, to blame someone else. Man, that's common, isn't it? Uh, parents cop it a lot. No, it's my parents' fault. Um, there's all kinds of uh, places we put blame. But let me say this especially. God is not to blame for our sin. You know, a lot of times people blame God for their sin. Sometimes in a kind of a, almost a casual way, well, you know, got red hair, I'm going to be an angry person. Yeah, and we blame God for, for what we do that's wrong. Um, we need to be careful. There in, uh, at the end of verse 4, he makes a, a, a statement when he says, that thou mightest be justified when thou, thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Now remember, he's talking to God here. Now, why would we need to justify God? Confession justifies God. It, it's, it's saying, God, you're not to blame. Now, God's, it, it, I don't mean justifies in the sense of declaring him righteous, uh, giving him righteousness, but it's just agreeing with God, saying, God, this sin is my problem. You're not to blame for my sin. Uh, we need to accept full responsibility. And that brings us to the, the beginning of verse 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. All sin is against God. You stop and think about it. If there was no God, there'd be no sin. The very fact that God exists is what makes it sin. We sin against God. Um, there's a good illustration of this with the, the man Joseph in, in the book of Genesis. You remember his story, how that his brothers sold him into slavery. And he ended up a, a, in, in a house where the master's wife was trying to get him to be immoral. Now, the King James uses the phrase, she kept saying to him, lie with me. And she didn't mean, she didn't mean tell an untruth. And uh, Joseph's answer is, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So he understood that the sin is against God. And even as a slave, he, he, he said, I can't do that. We need to understand all sin is against God. In verse 5, we need to understand that sin comes from our very nature. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, this is not something that was forced upon us. This is something that, that we're born with. Uh, the Bible uses expressions like the old man or the natural man. Uh, listen, the way we come out of the package is sinners. I've often said it. We don't have to teach our children how to, how to sin. Uh, Psalm 58 and verse 3 puts it this way. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. You know, kids can tell lies even before they can talk. <laughs> uh, they can cry a lie, you know. Oh, I need help. You know, they're just manipulating you. Uh, now, they don't, they don't lie every time, but uh, sin comes from, from our very nature. You know, the world's philosophy is... Follow your heart. If you haven't heard that today, you've heard it at least this week. People say it all the time. Follow your heart. What does God say? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And we think, oh, left to myself, I'll do good. Left to myself, I'll be right. No. Left to ourselves, we'd go to hell. We need to have a, an understanding, a right view of sin. Sin is not an accident. Uh, sin is not someone else's fault and hurts no one or should just be overlooked. Uh, the one that I've been noticing lately, a lot of times people will say, oh, man, I, I really made a mistake there. They might have committed a horrendous crime. And in looking back at it, they'll say, oh, boy, I made a mistake there. Listen, it wasn't a mistake. You think they'd say that if they hadn't been caught? Sin is against God. Sin comes from, from our, our very nature. It's so awful that it, it cursed our world and brought death and disease. It's why Jesus died on the cross. We need to understand, have a, a right view of sin. God saw sin as so important that it's enough to send sinners to hell. 
Wow. Isaiah, uh, put it this way, Isaiah 59 and, and verse 2. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. He goes on, your hands are defiled and, and so on. Uh, sin is a terrible thing. It was important enough that as sinners we're condemned to hell. It's important enough that God would send his son. What I'm saying here is don't minimize sin. David had to come to a point where he accepted his sin as coming from him. Um, Paul wrote in uh, Romans 7, In me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So first of all, a right view of sin as he, as he talks here in, in Psalm 51. Secondly, a right view of God. You know, to understand confession, it's not enough to see our sin. We need to see what God is like. Look at verse 6. He says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. It's talking here about God's holiness. We need to understand God's holiness. God's holiness <laughs> requires truth in the inward parts. Uh, you, you can't play games with God. Uh, God is holy and sees our heart. Uh, I find many people want to enjoy God's love but, and ignore his holiness. Uh, our God is both. God is love, but God is also holy, and he will judge sin. Uh, God's holiness requires truth. In verse 7, we see God's power. Purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You know, we sing the song, there's power in the blood. God has the power and God alone has the power to cleanse and forgive our sins. We need to understand the, the power of God. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes we, we get involved with works thinking, oh, I'll, I'll earn forgiveness from my sins. I'll deserve. And the problem is sometimes we treat each other that way. Well, I'm not going to like you until you pay me back for all the wrong you've done me. Um, this verse means that God can deal with my sins and God can change me. That's what 1 John 1, 9 says. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, let me ask you, can God change your sinful habits? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Uh, he is able. You know, we sing these songs and yet uh, sometimes I think we don't uh, don't, uh, in a practical way, believe them. God is able. Uh, you probably know Romans 6.23. Romans 6.22 says, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, we need to have a, a right view of God, His holiness, uh, His power. Uh, Verse 8 talks about God's chastisement. We need to understand God does deal with sin. Uh, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Now this is a, if I understand it right, this was something that shepherds used to actually do. If a lamb was uh, tending to run away and, and to get, get lost, uh, if it got bad enough, the shepherd would, would physically break the lamb's leg. He'd, he'd mend it, he'd set it, and then he would carry it until it was well. Uh, boy, that's extreme, isn't it? And yet the Bible says of us in Hebrews uh, chapter 12 and, and verses uh, 6 through 8, uh, Mr. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. See, God's chastisement. We need to have a right view of God. God is going to deal with sin. And in our lives, if we're children of the Heavenly Father, He's going to deal with us. And then in verse 9, we need to understand God's forgiveness. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. I think this is something that we can only find in Scripture. You're not going to find this in the natural world uh, to understand God's forgiveness. Uh, God has revealed himself to us, and forgiveness is a, a godly quality. 
that you're, you're just not going to see it just by logic. You're going to have to see it by, by the Word of God. God is a forgiving God. Uh, we're able to call for forgiveness because uh, that's the way our God is. Uh, Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah 43, 25. It's God speaking, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. God forgives because that's who he is. That's what he wants to do. God is not bitter. God doesn't hold on to his, his anger. If we'll come to him forgiveness, he'll say, yes. He's, he's not going to cast us out. God wants to forgive. Uh, there's another couple of verses in the book of Micah. Just listen. <clears throat> I, I marked my Bible so I can get there easy. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. What a blessing to know what our, our God is like. Uh, God's forgiveness. God doesn't want our sins to keep us from Him. That's why God brings conviction. That's why God brings chastisement. God wants that relationship between us to, to be right. And the, the joy is this. He's done everything necessary for us to be forgiven and to be right with Him. There's nothing lacking for our relationship to be right with Him, if we'll just confess our sin. True confession it requires, first of all, a right view of sin, but also a right view of God. You know, there, there's comfort in this because if it's a sin problem, God has a solution. <laughs> you know, we think, oh, sin, you know, that's, that's the most terrible thing. Well, it is a terrible thing, but God has a solution. God is willing and able to forgive. The third thing <clears throat> is we need to have a right view of self. Let me read verse, starting in verse 10. He says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. You know, as a believer in the Lord, I need to live a godly life. If I'm going to have the joy of my salvation, I'm going to need to be right with God. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is, is my strength. And when I do, it will help me to be what God wants me to be. I need to have a right view of self in my relationship to sinners. Look at verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Uh, listen, sin will ruin your testimony. It'll, it'll also take away your desire to, to talk to people about the Lord. You know, when sin is con in control of your life, especially as a Christian, you need to say that, but uh, when sin is in control of your life, it, it just takes away your desire to talk to others about their relationship to the Lord. You're thinking, well, I better get my relationship right. And it's true. Uh, confession is a very important part of, of growing spiritually making sure that, uh, that things are right uh, with your God. In, in verse 14 and down to verse 17, we need a right view of self for God's sake, for our relationship with Him. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of Thy righteousness. O Lord, open Thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth Thy praise. For Thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. You know, sin stops me from praising God. Sin stops me from having that, uh, that delightful relationship that, that God wants. He delights in our fellowship. You've seen it on a human level, where when you're, you and your wife or you and your husband are out of sorts or you and your friend, you know, you, you've wronged each other, until you get that thing right, the fellowship's not right. And God wants us to be in, in sweet fellowship with Him. And then, you know, we work our way all through this whole chapter, and it's only the last two verses where uh, David has a concern for others. Now, we need to have a right view of self uh, for others. Verse 18, he begins to pray for Israel. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion, 
Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Then shall they... He begins to pray for, for others. And if we'll get right with God, it'll help us uh, to, to have a concern for others. Sin makes us selfish and focused on self. I mean, it's true. We, we've all experienced it. You know, without true confession, uh, we will not grow spiritually. And let me tell you, God is very gracious. It doesn't, you know, there's not some ceremony or formality you've got to go through. When God brings something to mind, uh, from your heart, you just need to agree with God. It's speaking the same thing, having the same heart attitude uh, that God has towards sin. Uh, we need to see the awfulness, but we also need to see the, the greatness of our God in, in uh, the power to forgive. Living by faith. Uh, are you living by faith? Real faith will deal with sin. And uh, that will help us uh, to grow. I thought we'd close with... Uh, the song is page 534 from our hymnal. We, we sing it fairly often. Cleanse me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. It's from Psalm 139 as uh, we think about confession of sin. Page 534, I believe it is, if you have a songbook there. Let's stand and sing that together. Open that. Right. 